I do want to welcome you all. Those words that we just sang are, I believe, words to really live by, especially in this first worship of the year for all of us, and uh, just excited about the year, but also kind of reaching for some of those safe holds, for some of those places to put our feet and feel even just a little bit grounded. I think those words speak to that very clearly. I want you to know that um, David, our new worship leader, uh, has been able to vision out alongside of me and all the way through this first Sunday, this first light Sunday, all the way through our transformed study that's coming up. Um, he's been able to vision out and pray through um, music and words and lyrics that are really leading us. And so uh, that, that's been released on our Facebook page. On, it's a Spotify playlist. And you can check out those songs, and that's going to be a way for you to, some of the songs like this morning, you might not have known the first song, but it's going to be a way for you to really let your heart get familiar with those songs, so that way that's uh, just an added comfort and an added focus for you. So i uh, really excited, looking for, the, uh, for these weeks to come up and really be a blessing for us. Um, I am Pastor Jason. I do have a microphone now. I want to welcome all of you. If you are our guest this morning, I want to praise God if you are Horizons. I want to praise God if you're watching online and catching up on our recorded services, whether you're catching up or checking in for the first time. And um, if you are a guest this morning and you are nervous about being here, you are unsure why you're here, um, we just want to do whatever we can to really um, to let you be here uh, without you know, making you too much of a big deal, but also a way that you feel welcome. And that's not always easy to do, but that's what we hope to do today. Um, we are leading all to Jesus to become life change life changers here. That's Horizon's vision, which means that we are all seeking to let Jesus change our lives into what they were always intended to be. And we are then with Jesus and because of Jesus changing our lives, seeing how others' lives around us begin to change because of what he's doing in and through us. And that's, that's, the, that's the power of the gospel in its fullness. So if you've ever wondered what the gospel is, that's what we believe it is. Your program is provided for you to engage in the ministry. To, uh, it's another sign of welcome to you. Uh, we invite you to share with us that you're here so we can always be building relationships with you, that you're not just a face or a number. And uh, so you, first steps or ways to get more connected, these are for you. So you can turn this in during your, um, your opportunity to give back to God. It's one of your gifts. You'll see all the way through this important opportunities for your marriage, for their upcoming study, transformed, and other important things that are happening. And also on the backside, their worship outline, which I invite you to follow along with today and, uh, and also jump on the Holy Bible app here if you want to follow along that way. The scripture will all be provided there as well. So this is our first worship of the year. And all the way through history, in the wake and the light of Jesus coming and being born amongst us, the church, the early church, the ancient church, the traditional church, however you want to word it, has leaned into this Sunday. It is 12 days after the celebrated birth of Christ. So that's why you get the 12 days of Christmas song that we all love because it's highly repetitive and extremely long. Um, we, that we all love, um, that they would, on this 12th day, celebrate um, a thing called Epiphany. A lot of your traditional churches, maybe you came from a more traditional setting, um, still celebrate Epiphany on the Sunday. And what it is, essentially, is the celebration of the full manifestation of God in Christ. So God in the flesh. The God of the universe, unlike any other God ever told about, comes down as a human in the flesh and then begins to show and reveal himself. So on Epiphany, it's the Sunday that the church began to celebrate, saying um, through Scripture, the three kings came and visited Jesus, or Jesus' baptism. When Jesus walks down to the Jordan River, John the Baptist is eating locusts. He's got hair all over his face and body, and he's crazy, and he's telling people to repent. And Jesus comes down to him and says, baptize me, John. And John's like, whoa, 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 I think we got the order reversed here. Um, I can't do that. And Jesus is like, just do it. <laughs> Actually, he does. He says, this is, this is to fulfill all the things that have been said to come. 
Um, and so in that baptism, we hear the Holy Spirit, uh, the presence of the Lord above Jesus and John in the river. And, and God says, this is my son. Like, uh, I'm well pleased with him. Like, like, this full affirmation, Jesus, like, do your thing. And so it's the full manifestation of that. So as we look at tradition and we look at the early church and we also celebrate what God's doing right now, um, 2,000 plus years ago, we're calling today the, the first worship service the first light, uh, which is why the worship center is bare, which is why there's one single light um, in front of the altar here this morning. Um, this is the first light. This is the first glimpse. This is the first sight of the full manifestation. So it's not only the manifestation of God in the world, but also today we celebrate the full manifestation of Jesus in this ministry and in our lives. It's, it's joining that whole hymn of unending realization of the power of God in our presence and in that fullness. So today, we ask the question and then respond to it in certain ways. What is God wanting to do through Horizons in 2019? Now, when we say Horizons, you probably immediately close your eyes and think this building or you think of the, the awesome parking lot or the whole thing. Like, but essentially, Horizons is if you could do a 360 view and then look inward, it's you. So essentially, as we come and gather here today, you brought the church. And we ask the question, as all of us, as, as pastor, as staff, as, as fusion students, as DZ students, as, as all of us as adults um, in worship this morning, we ask, what is God deciding to do through us, desiring to do through us when we gather and allow ourselves to be part of something far bigger than ourselves. What is it that God wants to do? So that's a big question, but that's what we get to ask for the very first time this year. Now I know we are six days into 2019, like 2019 is already old. Your goals have been set, your resolutions are already in motion. Um, they say now it's 12 days until they will fail. Um, but, um, but, the, the, but this is the first time that we as a church, get a step outside of um, the goals that we set for ourselves and really come together to set goals that will have, um, no offense to your resolutions, but even greater impacts, even greater um, effects and influences on, on our community and even more importantly on the world and those around us. And so um, I want to welcome you into that. So as we discern what God's leading is for us and what God wants for us this morning, for this year, um, there are two things that we have to do. We have to, one, we have to look back and see what God has done. Because if you want clues for the future of your life, read the clues that God has already put in, in the past of your life. And also we're going to look towards the Holy Spirit and the word that he has given us that really guides us. So as we look back, we celebrate a pretty tremendous year at Horizons uh, 2018. In 2018, Horizons, um, because of your leadership and your vision, started a new ministry here um, called the WAVE Ministry, the Special Needs Ministry. And that has not only, um, there is a, we have a, a hired employee, we have now, we've given up some of the office space. If you haven't seen um, the WAVE Ministry room. You need to go check it out. You need to take a tour. Um, set your watch because you won't want to leave. Um, but you, we essentially, I gave up my office, the executive suite office. Um, to, <laughs> I know people are laughing. Um, I gave it up um, and now that's our conference room. And then um, I'm in a, one of the staff rooms and, uh, and two of our staff are actually sharing an office so we could make room for this ministry. And it's beautiful knowing that we get to reach Several families in Lincoln who have had no place to call home because of the inability for churches to open their arms to that sort of ministry or to those sorts of special concerns. That's amazing. I could stop there. Um, hand in Hand Ministry, our Zeman partnership, has mushroomed. Well, you don't even know, but um, teachers at Zeman on a, on a regular basis are receiving um, notes of care and, and, and food and, and, and things of these such. And, um, and you are helping read with students that are needing special attention. Um, Horizons people are serving at the carnivals so that 
the families of Zeman can actually be with their families, and they see all these crazy people manning these blow-up machines. Um, Zeman is just is taking off. It has been exponential. At the end of the year, Horizons was even able to reach out to Zeman and say, hey, what families do you have in your midst that we can just love on? And uh, uh, what, a, what a huge impact to the community that this body of believers is uh, able to be a part of. Confirmation, we celebrated last year another 33 students um, drawing near to who Jesus is in their lives. VBS, 591 uh, kids again filled this place and another 400 volunteers. And our reach has continued to expand because we, we understand this last summer that we're not just attracting the same old group right around us and everyone you know, knows us and goes to it because it's really neat. And we know that we have a higher reach now, that we are reaching all across Lincoln and that some of, um, some of the people that we have the hardest time reaching out to that we know desperately need a family and a community are present with us at Vacation Bible School. And that is a win in how they get to know who Jesus is and hear a different story in their lives. Project Hope has um, committed, has given over $83,000 in support over the year of 2018. Friends, that is 230% of our committed goals. And friends, uh, when Ken comes up here from the Project Hope team and he says, um, we talk about life change, life changers here, but at Project Hope, your life change, life savers. That's what we're doing. There are hundreds of kids who have a life because you have stepped forward and said, we don't know, we don't see, but we believe, and here's what we can do to help with your prayers, with your support, with your love. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat's dry, and I'm emotional, so now you know. <laughs> uh, and it goes even beyond that. Uh, the, then God led us into a debt reduction campaign. Uh, Horizons, for um, about 14, 15 years, had sat on a debt of about a million dollars. And uh, we all thought we were crazy for venturing into this. And uh, not only did you, as a community, through the power of the Holy Spirit, it's really important that you hear how the Spirit was moving in all this, exceeded our top goal. And not only did that, um, you have pledged to meet the entirety of the debt that Horizons currently carries. And we're already paying it off. Friends, we have already, we have a note in our safe now that says paid in full. That's the first one. And it feels so good to know that we are moving into the future. There are other things that are happening here that are uh, a little bit harder to measure, but we have seen people come to Horizons for healing. Uh, you have had broken lives. You're experiencing brokenness in your situations and have come here. And as a community and as a presence of Jesus, I've seen people experience deep healing in this community. I've seen other people come here uh, in the year of 2018 to seek sanctuary while their lives fell apart that even though things were falling apart all around them, that they came here and they found a place where they could hold on, where they could find a place where there was hope, and they could find a place where other people were wrestling with the same things and willing to talk about it instead of hide it and act like we're perfect or that nothing's going on. Horizons, I've seen you rally around families in need like, uh, like I had never dreamed of. I'm just willing to pour into whoever uh, needs help in whatever situations. I've seen through Alpha, that's our um, introduction to this whole Jesus thing, the art of parenting, um, our life groups especially. I've seen people's lives change. I've seen you grow as leaders. And I've seen uh, extraordinary people with all kinds of stories being willing to say, I will lead this. We don't know what we're doing, but we will lead it because we know that God has called us into this. I've seen amazing things. Our high school students are oftentimes the leaders in this ministry in, the, in their passion and their willingness and ability to get out and share the good news and love on people. Uh, from Fusion to DZ, people are growing in Jesus. People have um, truly, truly experienced his changed life and what it means to be a life changer 
in Jesus. So that's, that's the amazing point, part of this story, 2018. And we look also at 2018, and to be honest, we look at our challenges too. And um, in 2018, we continue to see not only these trends at Horizons, but this is a cultural trend. Chain, trend. This is a trend that, um, that is uh, happening in a lot of places. But um, we are, as families and as individuals, increasingly, overwhelmingly busy. And when it comes to choosing um, church, church as a, this is a trend, um, be, church takes a lower priority. And it's not saying that people are saying, I don't care about church anymore. But when there are two things on the table in the balances, uh, the trend is often that we will choose the other thing over our, our participation or our presence in our community of, of church or our presence with the Holy Spirit. One of the other challenges is that for the first time in our modern culture, it has become culturally acceptable to reject Jesus or the church. That it is not only, um, you're not only like a subculture, but you are, uh, if you are rejecting the church, you are part of now a group that it is absolutely okay and even rewarded in some circumstances to reject the faith and the belief of the church. That's a challenge. That's for horizons and for, for our culture, for our society. Um, oftentimes, even as Christians, we have seen that there is a, a continuing backward view of what the church is. Oftentimes, now the church is presented as an individualistic approach that we come here um, not as a community, but we come here as individuals, and that we come here um, to get something and to be blessed. When, in fact, Jesus has said, um, walk with me, let me take, take my yoke and we'll do life together that uh, it's how we see the church is no longer as Jesus has uh, expressed that. We've seen um, all kinds of difficulties in, um, in our society, in our world, in our politics, and that affects um, our worshiping body as well. We have uh, even our even our horizons worship body has changed a little bit in terms of um, horizons growing into a a deeper passion for Christ, and sometimes that 's a little bit overwhelming for some. Um, we have transitioned here at horizons into a new worship leader. Uh, we are sad to see Jamie go and excited overly excited to see David um, begin to serve in this capacity and and really grow together with that team, but it also, it changes um, uh, how we worship in, in small ways, but still in ways that we feel. Um, one of the challenges for 2018, we almost, almost made our 2018 budgetary um, goals. We were about 40,000 short, and so we will continue to pray about how God will be faithful, because we just sang a song about God's faithfulness. And if we don't mean it, in this year, then we shouldn't be singing it. So we, we only recognize that as a challenge and continue to pray as a community that we will continue to just keep on going with joy and with determination to be life changed life changers. So you've heard all of the exciting stuff. You've heard some of the challenges that we are facing. And now we ask, God, where are you in the middle of this? What are you doing? <laughs> right? I mean, we have seen some of the most beautiful things a church, I think, could hope to see in their community happening. And we've also some, seen some of those things that so many churches see in their community that we all um, just kind of wonder what it all means. So as we've been praying for this Sunday, the very first Sunday of our worship, what does this look like? Lord, where are you? What are you doing um, the Spirit, and this is honestly in prayer, we've been led to this passage in 1 John 2, 3-10. through 10. So there are Bibles in the back of the worship center. If you don't have one, it is your Bible. Write your name in it. Take it home. It's yours. Otherwise, follow along with me on the Bible you brought or the phone that is showing you the Scripture. By the way, in 2019, we're going to uh, be digging into some Scripture, and we've been studying out of the, com the Common English Bible. We are going to be studying out of the New International Version. That's what I'm going to be reading from on Sunday mornings, because it's a little bit more familiar, and will give, I think, our community a chance to dig into some of that Scripture 
a little bit easier. So this is 1 John. This is a letter, what we believe is written by, most likely, John, who also wrote the Gospel of John. And he's writing to a community that is stuck in this paradox where they have, um, they have been wooed by a group of people who say, Jesus really was just a man. Because God, who is absolutely perfect, cannot enter into something that is flawed, and humans are, are fundamentally flawed. Therefore, Jesus was just a man. So the community that was hearing this small group of people pronounce this were like, well, that kind of makes sense, because what that small group was saying was that, and because Jesus was just a man, and we are just humans deeply flawed, then we don't have to worry about ever striving to be more than deeply flawed. So the small group was denying Jesus as God and also saying, therefore, we do not need to pursue any sort of holy living or higher sort of standards for ourselves in the ways of love and the ways of, um, of, of holiness or purity. So there's a whole group that had heard the gospel of Jesus, but we're hearing from this small group, and they're like, whew, we need a break. Let's go do this. This seems easier. And it was attractive. And John, you know, is, of course, heartbroken, and he says, hey, but, you know, there's something that's going on even better than that. Like, let me remind you of what's going on. So this is the letter that he writes, and he writes in verse 3 of chapter 2. He says, we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Now, that's probably not the most exciting thing, but just hold on here, just uh, what, we're, what we're doing here. So he says, whoever says, verse 4, whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. But, see, because this group, this small group, they were trying to say, oh yeah, we believe in God, we are totally in God. God loves us and we're good. Um, it's just that whole Jesus thing and the whole um, being willing to change thing. He said, but John is saying, if, if, you, if you say you will know God and are in God, but not choosing to let your life look like God's, maybe there's an inconsistency there. Verse 5, but if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know. I love these words. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. I don't know about you, that's a... That's a tall order, but to strive to live like Jesus. It's a powerful aspiration. Dear friends, I'm not writing to you a new command. This isn't new. This isn't something that, you know, I'm just making up, John says, but it's an old one, which you have heard since the beginning. This old commandment is the message you have heard. Yet I am writing to you a new commandment. So John says this, is, this isn't a new commandment, but in Jesus it is a new commandment. Verse 8, it's truth is seen in Jesus, in him, and in you. Because Jesus calls each of you, as you come to him, his redeemed children. His children. It's the truth that is seen in him and in you, because the darkness is passing, and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light, and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. So this is our, our word for today. This is our first light. What does this mean to us? It's a reminder. It's an encouragement. It's a challenge. And it's also a blessing. So when we look at all the sprouts, all the sprouts that we have seen in this community around us, of all the things that God is bringing out of the ground and, and sprouting anew and, and allowing to take life and allowing to truly impact the lives of those around it. And as we look at the droughts and we look at the things that, uh, that challenge us and that are, um, that are dry, that need some water, that need some love, that need some care, as we look at who the Spirit is leading us to love and what the Spirit is saying to us, we begin to see um, all of these things coming together. The pieces come together in our unchanging purpose. We see the potential that God has given us, and we see how God is positioning us to move into a future of continuing to be life changed, life changers. 
So when we look at all of that has happened and we see uh, the ways that God has shaped new ministries, the ways that God has, um, has changed leadership positions, the way that God has entered into this community and said, in three years, you will be debt free. Not so, listen to this, you will be free. Not so that you can say, we are finally done. But so that you are finally ready. Friends, there's a whole world that I am absolutely convinced that God is desiring to create here on 20 acres of untouched ground. There's a whole set of things that I know I'm absolutely convinced that God is desiring to do in our community to reach those who are far away from Jesus, who are broken, who are needing healing, who are simply uh, living in the world without a direction or a purpose greater than their own needs. I'm absolutely convinced of that. And when we see how God has put all of these things together, we see that God is saying, just as Karen Hasse, the chair of the debt campaign um, committee, preached the very first sermon, she said, we are being broken away from our, um, from our, not contentment, what was the other word? Complacency. Thank you. Y'all were listening. That's great. <laughs> to break us free from our complacency and to move into this. And it was in that conversation that I had with Karen at the beginning of this whole thing that I understood that God was bringing us into a year of renew of renew, you can say renewal, I know I'm just putting it out there as renew, um, but a year of renew, that God is saying uh, it is time to renew. It's time to renew our hunger and our thirst for Jesus, to say that we truly desire him and the life that he has offered us in him. It's time to renew our purpose as life changed life changers, that we don't come here just to get something, but that we come here to be a part of something, and in the process, Jesus takes care of what we need. That we come here to hunger a a vision, that we are blessed as we bless. Not blessed as we sit, but blessed as we bless. So this renew in teaching in our, in our, our sermon series and the year and the structure ahead of us is already laid out. Um, I, I enter into a retreat planning at the, at, well, um, in the fall, September, and that's where I really feel that the Spirit says this is your way forward next year. So the first thing that we're going to start next Sunday, this is happening, is the Transform Study. It's a seven-week study on seeking Jesus' life change. Friends, I don't know how this doesn't fit any more perfectly into where we are and what this community is aspiring for. Transform Study. If you do not have a devotional yet, We're going to be working through a devotional. It's a daily devotional all the way through this. Um, There are devotionals available, and there's a table in the atrium. Get one online. You you do need to seek specifically for it. It's not available on Amazon. Um, But grab one of those devotionals. And if you don't have a life group to study it in, get a life group. Talk to Karen Harold. She's our adult ministries director. She will, in a blink, help you find a group on one of our nights, whether it's here at the church or whether it's a group that's meeting in a home. If it's brand new starting for the study or already existing, she will walk with you and get you into a group. Studying something in a group will affect positively your growth and your, and your life in the material at least tenfold than if you're doing it by yourself. So we'll enter into Transformed, and then we are entering into two sessions of what I'm calling Old School. And I can do this now because I'm nearly 40, so I have some street cred on this here. But <laughs> Horizons is going old school. So this old school series is going to focus there's a, in the spring and then also again in the fall is focusing one on, um, on God's word and prayer. And we have in the past spent up to nine weeks teaching the community how to read the Bible and how to get familiar with it, how to, how to learn to love it. Um, and it worked moderately so, but what, what the Spirit has led us to in these old school sessions is we're not going to teach you how to read the Bible. We are going to read the Bible. We're going to practice it together. 
So in this old school series, you're going to get one verse at the beginning of the week in a journal to lead you through it. And you're going to read that verse and study it for the entire week. And then I'm going to preach on that verse at the end of the week. And you will be amazed because you're like, wow, the same verse seven days in a row. You will be amazed how the Spirit unfolds that single verse in ways that you could have never imagined because we rarely spend that time that is needed to let Scripture live. So we're going we're gonna to go old school. We're going to cut out all the things, and we're just going to focus in on God's Word, and then we're going to focus on prayer. And I am so bold as to suggest, as to if we can put this together, that Horizons will actually designate homes in the community that we will be able to meet at in the morning and pray together during this season. It's right before Easter. It's, it's, it's in the middle of what they often call the Lent season of Lent that we're going to pray together, that we're going to actually pray in a way that is powerful rather than just praying at meals or with our children at home, that we're going to deeply engage in these things, that we're going to grow and we're going to renew ourselves in these ways. Spiritual freedom will be our series in the summer, and um, this is going to sound weird, and we'll just have to deal with this later, but we are um, digging into growth in the Holy Spirit in a process similar to the 12-step process that Alcoholics and Narcotic Anonymous also use. Okay? So uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a little bit mind and heart bending, but uh, a really powerful season over the summer. We'll find our way back. There's a series uh, about that, renewing our um, perception of who God is in the early fall. Then we will be uh, focusing in on our marriages in uh, in November. That's where a lot of marriages start to fall apart. And so we're just dialing in right there and renewing our marriages in in that time. We've got a big year ahead of us, an exciting year, a different year, um, a, a new year. You'll even see even our, our communion service is going to be a little bit different this year because we're like, well, why not? Let's throw all caution to the wind. Our staff this year is going to be deeply engaged in Renew. We are evaluating everything. We are evaluating what we celebrate, what we communicate, what we desire to see this church accomplish the most what our biggest win is, and how people are growing and learning to become disciples. We're evaluating everything throughout this year, and uh, you'll probably see some more changes. They're going to be good changes, uh, ones that won't probably leave you um, feeling really uh, abandoned, but changes that are going to they're, they're going to be different. They're going to be new, uh, because we want to truly make sure that Horizons is pointed not just at being a good church, but truly about how we are bringing people to Jesus as our highest pursuit. To grow into a church also that is irresistible. The early church, when, it was, when Jesus came and the church was just becoming, it was absolutely irresistible because of the freedom it offered people. How do we get back to that, to be an irresistible church again? So today I'm inviting you to seek renewal. Let this be uh, a part of your 2019, even along with all of your uh, goals and resolutions, to seek renewal, to set seeking Christ as a priority. To set seeking Christ as a priority. To choose Jesus as your highest pursuit. To, to, uh, that is completely unfamiliar uh, to you. To be able to just say these words, like, Jesus, I don't know who you are very well, but I want to seek you. I want to get to know who you are. To let his life and his light truly enter into us. The scripture that we read this morning, 1 John, if you, if you caught it, and um, we, we, I want to celebrate communion, so we're not, we're not going to go back, but if you caught it, essentially John was saying If you say that you have life in God, but don't obey his commands, then things might not be lining up. Essentially what John was saying is that uh, we're all looking for life, right? Like we are looking, we want a good life. And John is saying, if uh, if you are not willing to seek who Jesus is and follow his ways, like Jesus set this powerful human example of of the way to experience life. And John's saying, like, if you're not able to follow that, that way, that life will be difficult for you to experience. So we're encouraging you to, uh, to seek that life only found in Jesus, to let it become your own 
life. And also, uh, John very clearly says that if you are looking for light, you will not find it until you begin to love your brother and sister. And so, in the ways that we renew ourselves in his life and lights, that we follow him and his ways, and that we begin to see how our love reaches beyond ourselves to our brothers and sisters. We are reminded that it is all for the love, the freedom, and the grace that Jesus gave us that we are able to be here today to seek freedom, to seek renewal, to seek new life. And we're reminded that as Jesus came to live amongst us to manifest the fullness of God within himself and and get it all over people, that he came for reasons that were completely selfless. That on that night as he gathered his disciples around the table, that he was planning to give his entire self to something greater than himself. And so he lifted up the loaf that each were to eat from. He lifted up, he gave thanks for it. And then before them, he broke that loaf. And he said, take and eat. This is my body. It is broken for you. In your brokenness, in your shakiness of the new year, in the, the hurt that still is following you from the Christmas celebration, in, my, in your brokenness, take and eat of this. This is the bread of life. Let it make you whole once again. And after the meal, Jesus took the cup, lifted it up, gave thanks for it also, and said, and take and drink of this cup. This is my blood poured out for you, my everything, my life, so that as you receive it, you may be washed clean. As you come to believe in me and surrender yourself in me, this will wash over you, and you will walk out of whatever place you have received this refreshed and renewed. Jesus invites us to take these, to celebrate them, and let them be gifts that renew us and fill us with life. As we join our hearts in prayer, I want to invite you to pray along the Lord's Prayer, and the words are on the screen should you need them. Let's pray. Jesus, it is hard for us to imagine exactly what it was like around that table, but we try as hard as we can to enter into that to see you and to know the love that you had, the grace that was pouring from you when you offered yourself through your body, through your blood on the cross. Let today be a powerful day for us, a meaningful day. Let us receiving your bread of life and your cup of salvation and renewal be powerful choices for us that we may truly experience your sustenance and your new life as we take them, as we receive them.